but that's resistance, isn't it? That's just resistance. Because that supply is not an imbalance, is it? That's an acceptance. Do you agree with that? That is an acceptance. Yes? So if that's acceptance, the supply, the last supply that's in this market is still that price there, isn't it? That's the last supply. Now obviously if the market were to break south out of this area, does that become supply? Yeah, become supply. So when we take out that, we're changing the narrative, aren't we? If we now take out this level, we're changing the narrative. So if we went above this level here, that would be a sell trade, yes? If we went above this level here, that would be a sell trade. If we went above this level here, that would be a sell trade. If we went above this level here, that would be a sell trade. If we go above this level now, this is now a buy trade. If we go above this level now, this is now a buy trade because we've taken out the last supply. So you can see that knowing and understanding this becomes quite critical to when the market really is in your favor and when it's against. So I'll go back to the original question. Is 780 supply? No, because it never takes out the lows, does it? It rejects the low price. This is acceptance. So this is acceptance here. So where is the last supply line? Well, the last supply must be where there's imbalance. So there's the imbalance. And there's where the supply came in, yes? So that's the last supply line, ag agreed? So that's the last supply line there. So obviously when you take that supply line out, then now you're thinking about the idea that you're now buy side, buy side only. Because where did the demand come from that took out the last supply? The demand came from here. So that's actually demand that showed up there. It wasn't supply at all, was it? It was never supply. It's actually demand. So that would have been a horrible call, wouldn't it? Yeah, so that would have been a terrible call to count this as supply because it never caused an imbalance at the low lows. So what it was was resistance, and resistance obviously is what? If it's not supply, what is it? What is that resistance? Well, that's what we call a cap seller. Cap seller is just resistance. Cap seller is just simply resistance. And then based on that narrative, you can see how structure unfolded as we moved through the gears. As we took out the last supply line, we started to move into a buy market, which means these become the most important trades for us in here, yes or no? Because this becomes demand eventually, doesn't it? Because when we take out that supply and it goes through that, this demand moves, doesn't it? This demand now moves because that's imbalance. So when that's imbalance, that's obviously a new demand area, correct? So we're looking at that as a possible demand area. Do we get a spring trade into that demand area? Yes or no? We got the perfect spring trade into the demand area for the perfect buy trade on dips. Right there. Is that not perfect? Is that not exactly what we would teach in the classroom? Is that not almost a perfect, almost textbook example of how to trade structure and the demand supply narrative? That's why we gave you the context of the trade, which was the 15 second chart, so you could replicate exactly what the trade is. 
And when we asked about the, the value line, did the value go bullish, yes or no? Yep, so it goes back to that idea of, is that crystal clear? In other words, have we done enough to make it systematic almost? Have we done enough that when we compare the break of structure, when we compare this area here to that area there, and we say to ourselves, right, is the demand higher, yes or no? What the answer is, yes, demand is higher. Is value higher? Yes, it is. Value is also higher. Have you taken out the last supply? Yes, I have. I've taken out the last supply. Have I got a level two spring trade level to trade against? Yes, I have a spring trade level to trade against. In other words, have we turned this trade into a systems trade, basically? Yes, we have. Have we got enough evidence of pins into that area to suggest that there is a possible buy in here? Is it slow enough? Yes, it is. It's very slow. It's an incredibly slow move down. So we got enough evidence to buy that trade. In other words, it's a probability, isn't it? That is not a good trade. That is an outstanding trade. That is an outstanding benchmark trade. It has got all the system trade elements, which is, as I said, why we gave you the reference 15 seconds so that you could replicate it, see it, put it on your charts, redo it several times over so that you can recognize why it became a systems trade entry. That's the kind of trade that has no ambiguity. There is no discussion about whether it's crystal clear. It is simply crystal clear. And if it's not crystal clear to you, you need to figure out why it's not. Because I can't help you with that, because I to me that is crystal clear. If that's not crystal clear to you, you've got to try and figure out why you would think that that is not exactly what you're looking for from a trade. Everything is right. You're trading with the flow of the movement of cash. You've taken out the last supply line. You've got the time frame of reference correct. And you've got the demand line in line with the, prop, the uh, trade that you're looking to do absolutely perfectly. You've got the right price. You've got the break to the downside into the demand area with a spring trade. And from that trade narrative, I allowed you there to try and figure out whether you want to buy any more spring trades. And obviously, the last spring trade that we just got into obviously just killed it beautifully to the upside with a new target price for $1,200 subsequent to that spring trade we've just talked about. This one isn't as good as this one. This is the one you must have. It's a must-have banker buy trade in, in equities. And sometimes you don't get them as good as that. But when you do, these are the ones you absolutely annihilate, Donna. Because to get that much value at higher prices is rare. We normally get a lot of value like that at lower prices. Just like the sell, for example, with loads of value, right? There was nobody doubting that we had loads and loads of value to sell this higher high. But it's a top edge. We haven't broken any structures of any sort, right? We're in... We're in an uptrend. We haven't broken anything. We're still very, very, very wary of the fact we're selling into higher prices. So that's always going to be a tough one, right? That's a tough call. It should be nearly impossible for you to get short. It should be easy. It should be easy for you to get long in that trade there. That is a no-brainer buy trade, absolute no-brainer buy trade.